Good morning, and welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday after the day of Pentecost. We are um, worshiping this morning at Faith Lutheran Church here in Janesville, and a special word of welcome not only to our members here at Faith, but also members of our sister congregation, um, North Wasika Lutheran in Wasika. Welcome to worship. Um, please feel free. We invite you to share our worship service um, with your family, your friends, your neighbors, or anyone who you might like to invite to join us in worship on this day. Let us begin our worship with a word of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust in your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join Melissa in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 596, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. our worship with the apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. 
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading for today, the gospel on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost, is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And as the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then do these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the word, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of evil and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I was growing up, there was one thing that my brothers and I learned quite early on in life. We grew up at a farm, and not a summer would go by when either mom or dad would call us to help them. They would call out our names and tell us that they had a very important job for us to do. What was that job? Weeding. The first time my dad called out to us, we were pretty excited. We wanted to help out with this very important job. And so we followed our dad out to the tractor and watched excitedly as he drove us out to the hot, dusty fields. Then we learned rather quickly that weeding the bean field meant bending over and pulling out muscle, or mustard, thistles, and cockleburs so that the beans could grow undisturbed. Well, that sounds pretty easy, right? Well, if you said yes, chances are you've never tackled a fully grown cocklebur before. They are nasty and also very stubborn. And more times than I care to remember, I grabbed on and pulled with all of my might, only to fall flat on my backside on the dusty ground, with the cockleburr still standing proudly in place. What's surprising about today's lesson isn't so much the presence of the weeds. After all, we know that weeds are a fact of life. We know that weeds are something that cannot easily be changed. No, what is surprising is that someone actually volunteered to go out and pull them up. My brother and I learned after that first time to never be too quick to volunteer because chances were pretty good that it was going to be a job that we weren't going to like. So I ask each of you today, if I asked you this morning to volunteer to weed the church flower beds this afternoon, would you do it? 
Come on, be brave. Wave those hands. Thankfully, we are blessed at both churches with an abundance of volunteers, and we are grateful to each and every one of you. But in all, all actuality, we volunteer for just such a thing far more often than what we might think. This parable at its root is about the reality or the persistence of evil in this world. Thus, we should not be disturbed by its appearance in the abundance of the harvest that the Lord has sown. We should want to see evil done away with. Surely God's beloved creation would be a far better place without the weeds of evil taking root and eventually growing up taller and stronger and interfering with the beauty of the harvest. The question is, how is it that we go about getting rid of the evil that is among us? Do we do it by pointing fingers or scapegoating or blaming others? Do we do it by name, by name calling or bullying? Or do we do it by justifying why we can exclude those whom we do not like, we do not agree with, or what we do not understand? Do we feel important when we go on a crusade in order to rid the world of what we consider to be wrong or different or scary? Now, the weed that was prevalent back in Jesus' day was a weed called darnel or cockle, something that was prevalent in Israel at that time. It looked remarkably like wheat, so much so that the only way that one could tell the difference between the wheat and the weed was at harvest time, because then the, the ears of the wheat would become heavy and begin to droop, whereas the ears of the darnel or the cockle would remain standing. I share this because it, asks, it helps us to ask this question. How much damage could we be doing when we rush to do our weeding without really being sure about what it is that we are doing? Could it be that this is a word of caution for us when we think that we need to be doing the business of weeding and judging? In the parable at the final harvest, notice who does the separating. Not the slaves who volunteered, but the angels. Another indication, and a powerful one at that, that the work of judgment is not our task to do. It is a task that belongs to God and will take place in God's timing in a way that does not destroy the abundance of the harvest. And while this word might make us squirm more than just a little, it is also a profound word of grace. For remember a few of the other phrases from Matthew's gospel. Phrases like, why don't you point out the speck in your neighbor's eye, but don't see the log in your own? Or as Matthew reminds us, we all stand in judgment. And thankfully, that word belongs to God. And that word is a word of shocking grace. For the word in this lesson for causes of evil, which will be destroyed, is scandalon. That is a Greek word from which we get the word scandal from. It is also used when Jesus tells Peter to get behind him. But he is a scandalon or a stumbling block when he tries to prevent Jesus from suffering. The point is, Jesus, who is the very face of God, didn't weed out Judas, even though Jesus knew that Judas would betray him. Jesus didn't weed out Peter, even though he would deny him and not always get things right. And Jesus didn't even weed out the rest of the disciples, even when he knew that they would desert him in his hour of greatest need. And so the, the word of amazing grace is that Jesus doesn't weed us out either, in spite of our imperfections and our sinfulness. No, Jesus continues to work with us until that final day, when in the midst of the harvest, our imperfections will be melted away. And what remains is the fruits of the harvest, a harvest so very beautiful that it will shine like the sun. And you and I will be a part of that harvest, 
Thanks to the grace of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks to a God who loves us so much that he would send his son to die for us in order that you and I might experience life and life in abundance. It is that gift that we celebrate today and every day. And so in the light of that gift, both today and in the days to come, when you see weeds springing up in your own garden or lawn, do not despair. No matter how persistent or stubborn they are, they will not last forever. For they will be changed, and what will remain is the fruits of the harvest, which will shine like the sun. May that day come soon. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue our worship service by um, sharing um, our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for all who are in need, and for all of God's good creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the beauty of each and every day. We give you thanks for your calling to sow the seeds, and from time to time even be called to pull the weeds. We give you thanks that you are a God who is ever near to us, who nurtures us and calls us forward and helps us to grow in faith. Today, Lord, we pray for our country as we undergo um, this pandemic. We pray for all who are most affected. Give us strength and give us courage for this hour. We also pray for our brothers and sisters of color as we struggle together as a nation to work towards a more just future for all people. Give us strength and courage for this journey as well, Lord. And Lord, we also pray for our own churches and for our members we especially pray for your healing, for Diane's friend Mary, for Joyce's granddaughter Jenny, for Dan and Cheryl's friend Greg, for Penny's brother Barry, for Chip, Eva, Alfred, for police officer Madsen, and for Deputy Langer. We also pray for your healing for Bob, for Ken and Naomi and their daughter Jody, for Kathy, for Diane's sister Bonnie, for Keith's dad Phil, for Denny and Mary and their daughter, Wendy. For all of these things, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks for the power of prayer and for the opportunity to gather in your holy presence. Prepare us now for a new day and a new week. Bless us and give us the eyes to see new opportunities every day to share the good news of your love and your grace. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time in our service, we usually receive the offering of our gifts and our tithes. As always, we encourage you to send your offerings to our church office, and the address is found printed in your bulletin. Um, for those of you who are from North Wasika Lutheran, we ask that you would mail your offering um, to our financial secretary, Gladys. And once again, her uh, address is found printed in your worship bulletin. For those of you who might be struggling during this time of COVID, struggling financially and wondering how all your bills are going to be paid. We have a special fund in our congregation. We are here to help um, if you have need. And so if you or a family member or a neighbor are in need, please call the church office or call my cell phone. We are happy to help out. And please know that any concerns that you shared will be held in the strictest of confidence. So please do not be afraid to contact me if you are in need. And now let us continue by praying together as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us receive the blessings of Almighty God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 679, For the Fruit of All Creation. And once that song has been sung together, um, our dismissal is, Go in peace, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.